Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you this evening? Good. I mean, I mean, we're talking the boys, House of Dragon. Um, but before we get to that, I have to tell you, yeah. I finally watched a movie. Oh, Finally watched the movie. I know it's been a long time, people. So just sit back. Um, any any guess as to what movie I threw on? Now I will give you. It it occurred like Sunday Sunday afternoon. I got okay. done finished eating lunch. I put on the boys, mm -hmm. and then I went into this movie. And then right when I finished, I finished eating dinner, and I was like, "Bam! House of the Dragon." <laughs> <laughs> So, so any guesses as to what movie occurred in between? <laughs> oh boy, um, I have no clue. Okay, okay, it was Dune Two. Oh, now, I would not have, I would not have guessed that. No, no, but I did say a while back when it was in theaters how I was like starting to question, hmm, should I go see this? Because I heard some really good things about it and everybody, yeah. I felt like everyone was going. So I got a little FOMO. Um, but but I I did not because every time I would see that runtime, I was like, good, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and and yes, that is a long ass movie. Now, now when I say watched, it was definitely uh, me threw it on, started mm -hmm. doing other things. <laughs> There were there were points of check in and then check out. Check okay. in, like like Florence Pugh on the screen, check in. Florence Pugh not on screen, che check out. <laughs> 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 Anytime essentially Timothy Chalamet is alone or with any character who's like not Zendaya, check out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I would say that. Yeah. I am sure it looked beautiful on the big screen. It was mm -hmm. shot that way. Yeah, yeah. But, but, dear Lord, it is so freaking boring. And mm. there are parts. And I understood. I actually will give it some credit. I understood more what actually was happening in this, um, in the sequel than I did during the first one. Okay. Um, and and it was it was very clear like bad guys good guys what what events actually have to occur what is going on i i thought they did a very good job austin butler everyone was talking about him i understand why okay <laughs> totally okay. understand why um it, he met met expectations did not exceed but met expectations and and so in retrospect Am I still satisfied that I did not go see it when it first came out in theaters? Yes, because that is a freaking long ass movie. And I want to say 80% of it, people are just in sand with worms. So good Lord. And, and it's just, I don't know. It, there wasn't, there wasn't a lot and you really have to be invested in Timothy Chalamet's character to really want to follow everything. Um, so I I think I think I probably liked it more because I also wasn't like glued to my TV. <laughs> mm. I was I was giving myself the freedom. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna wash a dish. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put this away and and not like, oh my God, I don't care what's going on right now. No, I, I just go do something else. And and if I if I suddenly find myself watching it which every now and then would happen. And then I had to go do something upstairs. I would pause it. So, mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, so I had a full day of pretty much just watching things. Yeah. Like I said, I, uh, yeah, whenever you, whenever I was racking my brain, I, I was figuring whenever you said you watched a movie, I was like, well, maybe it's a K movie or, or something, but uh, yeah, but Dune 2, you know, I, you know, honestly, I am not, I don't know if it's just because I, I still have scars from the David Lynch 1984 version or, 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 or what, but I, I don't know, or maybe it's just, Dunes has never been honestly a, a story that has attracted me as far as a science fiction reader or, or, or even or to, to read or, or, or to watch, to be honest. So, Which, 
which is which is very interesting considering how much it <laughs> because I believe Dune was written before Star Wars ever came out, right? I believe so, yeah. Cuz cuz you can tell that um George Lucas read him some Dune. <laughs> <laughs> you, like especially in this movie i couldn't see it too much in the first one but in this movie i was like yeah yep yeah, mm-hmm. totally see how this could have influenced uh the creator behind star wars mm-hmm. yeah. so and people do say like if you watch both of them back to back it's one cohesive story and you really it it feels more fulfilled Mm-hmm. Um, which which I would understand, except that would be just way too long. <laughs> way too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's yeah, you know, I I've tried to watch the first one, and I think you know, any, folks who listened to the podcast before have heard me say this. I you know I fell asleep on it, and if you're new to the podcast, I hope you you know forgive us if if you're a Dune fan and you know you think it's the the best film ever ever. I'm not saying that it's not. It's just it's just not for me. It works for some people, but doesn't work for me. It it is a good appetizer to then go into Westeros, you know, because it like it is very similar. There's a lot of politicking happening. There are two sides. There's a brewing war, and it's like you you can't just have these leaders go into war. They need their armies, and they need people to believe in them for whatever reason, and so there it was interesting to watch that and just know that in a few <laughs> minutes I will be back in Westeros and seeing how how the brewing Targaryen war is unfolding. Um which leads us to House of Dragon episode three, The Burning Mill, which is an appropriate title for basically the cold open of this episode where we meet the Breakins and the Blackwoods uh, who have a little verbal sparring mar- match. You can already tell there's history. You can tell there's distaste and rivalry. And then you flash forward to everyone's dead. Um, we find out truly which one won in the end, but um, we we basically are shown how the Targaryen war that is brewing has allowed people who are already fighting over lands in Westeros to be used that as like, oh, well, if you choose that person, I'm choosing this person. And then we really can go to war and resolve this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, do, yeah. What do you think about this cold open? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're right. I mean, the Targaryen battle within the family that was that that is brewing you know ple- people are are using that as a proxy to to be able to where they have some pre-existing beefs with other folks within Westeros using that to like okay we're going to you know ready to throw a hand so yeah the Bracken and Blackwood definitely did that but also i think the cold open really just uh we've had a lot of of build up as far as the first two episodes this season sort of setting all the the chess pieces and stuff as far as team green and team black and we've had some um we've had some some of the common folk the small folk also and now we're starting to see some of the other belligerents who will be siding with one of you know with team green or team black in the you know whenever we had this open and 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 so and it really gets to something that Renice was really getting to in, in in this episode as far as you know some people just just want to fight it's just well yeah. is it some people or is it men 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 want yeah. to fight yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, and yeah because whenever you see the whenever you see that cold open whenever the 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 Blackwood and the Bracken are, are there. I mean, you know, it's very, you know, really just a trivial thing about who moved the rocks. <laughs> I mean, they were just looking for an excuse. And and so these folks were like, oh, yeah, we're ready to throw hands. So are you the Kinslayer or are you, you know, or, or are you with the true king, you know, the true king? And and so they just like ready to go. And so I really right. like that. <laughs> I really like that, that, you know, so I really thought that really just sort of set the stage because this episode really was, for me, it seemed like a, a real transition to getting us cl- 
what what the season is about, which is the Dance of the Dragons. Well, yeah, yes and no. I, I, w- I would agree with you partially. I mean, yeah. yeah, and I think next episode is actually called the Dance of Dragons, but I could yeah. be wrong. Um, yeah. Um, I, I don't know if I would a hundred... I guess my my thing is is that to go back to your point about Renice and what she says, and the the fact that all of Renera's council were men except mm-hmm. for her, and who were all saying like you need to go in hiding, Queen. Like we can rule in your stead, and we will fight for your honor and and glory and all of this. Like. That's what a man in the society knows and does. Like, yeah. And you see that play out through most or pretty much all of the male characters. And what was interesting about this episode is it really it was a culmination of a lot of the things that we've talked about in the past with this show. That there's they, they've done a very good job of making female characters very central in the plot um they all have varying degrees of power but it's still a patriarchy and even though they are central characters and they have power they also don't and so you're and you're fighting with that because you also see these male characters who also have varying degrees of power but because they're male and in certain positions, they arguably have more than the female characters. And they're not central characters, arguably. Like it's oh. it's very, it's very interesting. And I especially like how they tie it all the way back in the ending scene to how we were introduced to this world with with the first episode where we get our first horrible birth scene uh-huh. <laughs> or birth scene down Ram. but also we get that moment that moment that stood out to me uh between Renera and her mom who even talk about it who says like yeah the men are out there waving their swords around trying to get yep. glory whatever that means fighting on the battlefield our battlefield is here like yep. we have to yeah. survive giving birth in a time where like current medicine is not available. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, it, it, it was, it's, I like, and I appreciate how they kind of took an episode to remind the viewer of that thesis statement that they presented mm-hmm. all the way back at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a very, very good point. A very good callback to tie things together from the very first episode to, to now and also, as I was watching this episode, I did think about our conversations about uh, the, the the power of women in in Westeros, and um, also, um, you know, how 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 they can flex it, but also how also it's uh, sometimes ignored, and and we see that uh, play out with with both councils of Team Green and Team Black. As far how, as how, how they ignored. how they treat how yeah how how the men basically you know with with Alicent uh, you know she continues to get more and more marginalized especially mm-hmm. now that Otto is gone and mm-hmm. and that, and Renera in this episode you know we saw it last episode and then we see it even more so now that Damon's gone how the other Corlys Gollum the 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 Dithers or Dragonstone I don't uh, remember yeah how they were trying to uh, you know, again, marginalize Renera, and and and, and he, if he, even if she calls it out. You know, it's just like what you guys are, you know, proposing here is is treason, <laughs> as far as trying to like say, oh no, no, little lady, you know, just don't worry your head about it. We got it, we got it. You know, we we got it. And, and well, so, they they were manipulating yeah. because they're like, you yeah. just suffered an attack, and yeah. so. Now the correct thing, because I want to, I want to remove you from the situation is to use that to try to manipulate you to go into hiding. Now it is, I did appreciate how 
she kind of met them halfway where she's like, yep. you know what? That's not a bad idea. I'm going to take my offspring mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and send them away, yeah. <laughs> which thank God, because I've been thinking the whole time. I'm like, Venera, um, you just lost a son. Don't yeah. lose more. Don't <laughs> send lose, the yeah. babies away. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, you're not, yeah, you guys, Dragon Snow's not that far from, from King's Landing, so. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. Got, they got, they've got Vagar. Yeah, what what did you think about, oh, my God, Can't, this episode made it very clear how, cl like, between this week and the first episode, it's very clear how close Dragonstone and King's Landing are to one another. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my yeah. God. Yeah. Um, but about her sending her kids away, she also sends dragon eggs away. Mm -hmm. That's very telling. Yep. Um, and then and she sends uh, Raina. Raina, yep. Raina away. What yep. What did you think about Raina's part in this episode? Yeah, two things. So one, um, as far as sending the dragon eggs away, apparently those dragon eggs do uh, are apparently are uh, Daenerys dragons down down the line. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as far as sending her away, she, it was smart in the sense that, you know, she, it was, it was a necessary thing that had to be done to basically make sure that her, that Renera's legacy and all is not lost if they lose the castle. Right. And, and, and so, but, but also Reyna. I thought that they were going to pair her with sea smoke because there was that scene where like, yeah. Um, her, R Rhaenyra's late husband's dragon yeah. was restless and like yeah. somebody needs to claim, claim it. Um, I, so a, I, I, thought, I thought she was going to try to have her match up with that dragon. No. Yeah. I have a theory about who's going to get paired up with Sea Smoke, but let's, let's put a pin in that. So, yeah. So as far as Raina, I mean, I, I, I think she, she, to me was disappointed. And, you know, in that she really, she really wanted to take an active role in the fight. And, you know, Bela's getting to do, you know, because Bela's getting to go out on patrol and do things. Jace is getting to do things. So I, I sensed her disappointment when she was, whenever she was given a task basically to be a nursemaid. But in some regard, she has one of the most important jobs of all of them. Instead of just being one more family member who could be, you know, basically personnel and cannon fodder for the the, the war effort, you know, she has the important role, duty of making sure that whatever happens, regardless of how many people survive or how many people die in this, she's got to make sure that the kids and the eggs will survive to to to, to you know to continue the the tar the black team Targaryen line. So, right. so if, to me, it was, it was, even though she was disappointed, uh, I think especially when, but when Bela and they, her talked, I think she realized on some level, okay, I do have one of the most important missions here, even though I'm not picking up a sword, I am doing something very critical for this effort. So, uh, right, right, exactly. So oh, what is your theory about sea smoke? So I, I think it, uh, you know, whenever we get introduced to uh, Olaf, the mm -hmm. uh, guy in the in the who has um, who does have dragon seed because you know, he apparently is, uh, I guess, the bastard son of Balon and, and Viserys. Claimed. Yeah, so it's a claim, uh, which is funny. He like makes that claim just as Aegon like walks. In. Right. <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, okay, that scene did not play out how I thought it was going to play out, but uh, but. If that's the case, and you know the the thing about this show we've seen is they don't introduce characters just for for no reason. And oh, so, because we, yeah, so I'm thinking if he is indeed of the Targaryen line, and they're going to need some people to ride, you know, we don't have this pair, we have this unpaired dragon right now. He might be the one that gets it. Right, right. No, that that is a a great theory, and you're probably right because at, yeah. he had so far introduced. Between what, um, Alan, Alan, yep. Yep. Um, Olaf, yeah. and mm -hmm. then Hugh. Like these yep. these characters, very quote unquote commoners who are given given screen time that have yet to pay off. But they but they will. They they're certainly brewing the 
the pot here um and and it was and it was a great transition scene of just i mean you you know Aegon, Lyris talks some sense in him kind of manipulates him but says no 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 you can't go even though you want to because that's what your family want as they are also trying to get your throne which which is kind of not necessarily true <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it, it makes sense. Um, yeah. like you know, you, you you can see like that is the button to push, and then mm -hmm. and then Aegon walks walks in and he's trying to get the squire to go fuck someone, and then he walks in on his on his brother, and um, I don't know, I I really want to see more Aemon and Aegon interactions. And so at the start of this episode, when uh, when Aemond is at, at the small council, mm -hmm. still not sure why, like they haven't been clear about what his title is, but there there's clearly some respect and, and, and something there between these two. Yeah. But at the same time, then you have this scene like 40 minutes later and <laughs> half of me is just like oh my god is this just is this a reminder that Eamon is still the little brother or yeah. is this just showing how like Aegon now we're seeing like the lunacy in his grief because the guy did just lose a son I don't know how many days before this episode oh not too many because I mean yeah. the the rat, I mean, it was pretty clear what the establishment of the uh, rat catchers still hanging out in the square. Uh, right. It hasn't been right. that long. Yeah. Right. Which, thank you for bringing that up. Because um, this episode, we already talked about how the, like, the female, the patriarchy versus the matriarchy and that sense on war. Um, but... I, I like the use of that image mm -hmm. as well as there's there's a conversation where we learn more about the Brecken, Brecken and Blackwood rivalry from um, as Damon ends up talking to Strong in Harrenhal. Mm -hmm. And and I I just I just love love the line of like, well, why why did they hate each other? Well, who knows? That answer is lost in time. Yeah. Like it it is it and then that just echoes into a later scene where Rhaenyras and Rhaenyra go back and forth. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. sooner or later people will forget who what the start of this was. I mean, yeah. is right now it's not it's not Luke's death. It's actually Jaehaerys's death that is making people want to pick sides and thinking mm -hmm. like that was the start of the war. And oh yeah, don't forget, there was a time when one of your sons poked out Eamon's eye. So yep. like, did it start all the way back then? Like, when did it start? It doesn't matter. The mm -hmm. only... People only know what, like, the current event or action and also how it affects the other person. And and I think just in terms of showing that hanging rat catcher, it's just a reminder, arguably, at this point, more commoners have died yeah. than Targaryens. Yeah. Yeah. There's... There's the commoners, yeah, more of, yeah, uh, uh, the commoners have, the, you know, like we talked about at the beginning, the the, the proxy battle with yep. the, the Brackens and the Blackwoods. Yeah, I mean, more people, but I'm glad you brought that that up as far as what Renice was telling Renera and how that, you know, and I guess it was when I was thinking about uh, when we were talking about the cold open, I, I thought about that too, as far as like why, you know, what what what's the purpose of all this fighting again? <laughs> and 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 you know, and I guess when Damon was in Harrenhal and hearing from Strong, I mean, I, you know, those are all. I think that's what 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 makes this show work so, so well for me. It's just like, you know, 
we at the end of the day we have all these various factions sort of positioning themselves and you know perceived slights and actual slights and you know it's, it's sort of like you know, yeah it's just like you see this in family you do see this in family it's just like what you know you just know somebody's beefing right now uncle uncle jane is beefing with aunt Susie and and at the end, you know, and the kids are kind of sitting there like, well, what's the beef about? And 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 people, at, you know, it could be a beef that goes back to something in childhood. <laughs> and, well, but and, but and people don't know about it. And but you know, here, you know, as as Renice points out, at the end of the, you know, to your point too is, you know, if it's a kins kinsman versus kinsman fight, and you have the nuclear bombs of people having dragons, you know. So far, everybody's been restrained, but this is just it's just not going to end well for for anyone if if we if we don't pull this back. Right, right. Yeah, I I think more what you're getting at is like the show does a really good job about perspective because mm-hmm. this episode, a lot of it actually, well, not a lot of it, but it, there's a bigger discussion being have about Heron Hall and the Riverlands, like. Yeah. Yeah, they're Dragonstone and King's Landing. Like, I could get there quickly. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're they're very close. And then you have the this this fam divided family who are fighting each other, or not even currently fighting, just preparing for war mm-hmm. inevitably. Yeah. Um, and then Damon arrives at Heron Hall. <laughs> which <laughs> abandoned for the most part yeah because yeah. we're out people it's just it's like it's like and the guy's like oh what's going on in king's landing who cares <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like there the further out you go and this is what something in that i i think why a lot of people gravitated to the game of thrones series is that it was a world it wasn't mm-hmm. just one part and we have spent so long in King's Landing and Dragonstone that you forget Westeros is huge and wide. And there are people who, yes, are they affected by the political drama between the Targaryens? Absolutely. But at the same time, it's just like in that opening episode when we were at the wall in the north, it's like, I got other things to do. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't bat, like like you guys you guys have dragons go go and fight okay I I have to protect my men so you're you're seeing perspective and the further you get away from it the more arguably the better and the um bigger perspective you have on the matter it's just like so you know one day long ago no one's gonna care what started this fight they're just going to care at the end of the day who won who won and what line continued and what line didn't because Mm -hmm. of it and unfortunately along the way other people's lines totally get taken out too just because like when you go to war it's armies Mm -hmm. it's people fighting so yeah Um, yeah yeah uh what um Heron Hall, we also see uh we see Damon have a have a vision of sorts where we we see um lo- the lovely young Renera sewing mm-hmm. on um Jaharis's neck, yeah. Jaharis's head. Yeah. And 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 then shortly after he's told by some stranger in the castle that you're gonna die here. Mm-hmm. So, so, so what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So, I had, you know, so a couple of things. One, I think that's the first time I've actually seen Damon, like, actually, like, he, he was freaked the fuck out. <laughs> he <laughs> he was, his pants. <laughs> yeah. He was, uh, yeah. This man, actually, I was like, wow. Yeah. This, this is, this is creeping him out. And, uh, but also, I mean, there were so many things that, 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 that were conveyed in that beyond the fear. And, and and I don't know if it's one of those things where he was he was I mean I think Damon does have a conscious, um and 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 there several things he probably was thinking about I mean maybe guilt over 
the fact that he did end up causing the death of a, a relatively innocent child. Um, I also, I mean, it was very interesting that he, you know, whenever he had the vision, it was of young Renera. Yeah. So was he feeling, you know, so was he feeling guilty or, you know, about some of the things that he did, you know, the, the, how he took advantage of his niece? I mean, so. No. I mean, there were just. Hmm? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I, you raised. You raised an excellent question where I was just like, why did they choose to yeah. show young Renera versus old Renera? I don't think it's guilt. Okay. Because she says something. She says, I'm always cleaning up. You. What she says in her actions yeah. are actually of older Renera. Right. But she's younger. And maybe they did that. Because that is, quote unquote, I, I understand, but we're talking incest here. That is who he was initially attracted to, initially mm -hmm. loved. Like, yeah. that is who he fell in love with. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, yeah. you, I, I, I just find it hard to believe, like, he feels guilty over taking advantage of, which he arguably didn't. I mean, they didn't have sex in that episode. Christian Cole had sex with Renera in that episode. Yeah, he did. Like, like, yes, it's the uncle. Call it what you will. But he still had sex with Renera when she was clearly of age. She already had a few children. Yeah. I mean, but he, yeah, but he did take some indecent liberties. I mean, there yeah. stuff stuff happened there. Yeah, there was there was an emotional bound, but but still, the real yeah. villain and person who should feel guilty, Sir Christian Cole. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but don't, don't don't worry, I get it. I'm <laughs> going to pile on him here shortly, but yeah, but uh, but I you know, but as just just getting back to to that scene, um, and as far as like if, you know, as far as his death, I mean, I don't know if it's you know, where where they talk literally, figuratively, you know, is oh, it going to be by death? Uh, I I I don't think it's going to be this season, but mm -hmm. I think that they put that line in there very purposely. And this, the whole thing is so ominous that it's like, no, no, he, he is, he, he's going to die in an abandoned castle, probably the Lord of that castle or something. And so all of this glory, like, like this, this legacy or whatever it is that he's wanted or feels like he was due because of his birthright, he, he will get, but he'll also die there. I don't yeah. know. There, there's some kind of poetry in what they're trying to do with that, um, totally. but I could be wrong. So no, no, yeah, yeah. No, I think something. I will, I will say I was uh, given all the strate strategic import that both sides were putting on Heron Hall. I, I was, I was, I had to be honest. I was, I was a little disappointed <laughs> whenever it showed up. I was like, and I, and I, I guess. You know, again, since I didn't watch, did Heron Hall was it a relevant part of uh, Game of Thrones, the first series, or I show so up? Or? It's been a while, guys. It's been a while, and yeah. I know that name. I think it was very. It was. It was. We were there for a bit in. The, I, I want to say season two. I think. I think that's okay. the castle we were talking about. Okay. I think, but I'm not positive. Um. But but I definitely I don't it it's not something like oh I've never heard of this place and and that's mm -hmm. another thing like for those who watch Game of Thrones for those who get, who read the books like all of the places like they're they're not sliding in making up new new places yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we they they're like we're gonna go easy on the readers or the the viewers because we're already having like it's just driving me crazy like Renera, Renaris, Renarin. like like i'm like how yeah. what, what is happening here <laughs> I, yeah, I forgot that I forgot that uh, Renera had a, had an egg on as well. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She has an egg on. She has yeah. a mysterious. 
<laughs> like, uh, like people get a dictionary with new words. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. dying here. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's let's get into Christian Cole, and then we'll um, then we'll get into Allison and Renera's uh, final scene together. Yeah. Yeah. So Just Cole. Like- yeah, he he is so he you know he is so in over his head. And whenever they like start the scene with him just standing there and like and the look on his face when they pan to him and and his whole body language and stuff, it was just like man, I'm you know, I'm way in in over my head. And 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 then of course coming in late to the council meeting and it's just like yeah, everything about him is just like uh, I talk about falling failing upward, you know, falling upward. Even though he's like, you know, mediocre dude. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. He, like, I don't know. I don't know what to do with Christian Cole. I will say I did hear that the actor is getting some shit from fans. And yeah. guys, don't do that. Because oh. the the actor is doing a fine job. Now, I will say... It's not that I love to hate Sir Christian Cole. It's not that, trust me, we're going to talk about the boys in a bit. And I love to hate Homelander. I love to hate Homelander. He's an excellent villain. Sir Christian Cole just happened to step into this role. <laughs> <laughs> and, and made some choices. Now, the actor is performing perfectly fine. Oh, yeah. So, so just, just do not confuse the two, okay? Do not. Exactly. Um, but, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and that yeah. goes for all of Team Green. All of Team Green, lovely actors doing a great job, especially Olivia Cook, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But, but like, like they don't confuse the actor for like the character. Very different people. Yeah. Uh, and trust me, like there, there's some characters from Game of Thrones, like. <laughs> <laughs> those actors oh those poor guys um but yeah like whatever he's he's off he's off with trying to do another scheme to go get to heron hall which i'm excited for because i want damon to like beat him a little bit and mm-hmm. and he's being escorted of sorts by um allison's brother who, yeah. who between Allison's brother and Allison's son that we never saw <laughs> the only like rewind five minutes when I say they're not throwing some random stuff in, in terms of the high towers there's a bit of like family tree that I'm just not tracking <laughs> <laughs> but yeah this all is funny yeah you know she it, the the tension between Allison and 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 Sir Christian whenever uh, her brother showed up and and and, and all, you know, it, it, you know he was asking for a blessing and she gives him her you know her little claw from her breast and all. It's just like oh, that's like man, I, I talk about like either either one they are like having an icy breakup or two. It's too bad that they were like both thinking, damn, it's too bad we're here in the middle of the square, so we can't get it on. <laughs> oh, it's definitely not icy breakup. Those two are <laughs> continuing to fuck. They they will Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're definitely still doing that. Um yeah. that attention all was so the wall he carries a torch for Renera that I will yeah. never understand. But yeah. um speaking about Renera and Alcent, um, so in this episode we, it had to happen. Mm-hmm. Am am I? I'm. It's a little bittersweet because on one on one hand, I'm like, this is the second time we've had someone from Team Black sneak into King's Landing, <laughs> <laughs> and it's guys, like, come on. And and some people I've heard have been like, yeah, but the tension of it all and her dressing up, and I was like, what? T- you really think they're gonna kill Renera in the like this random episode? Like, no, there's no way. So so it just uh, like I didn't like that. Now the scene itself. Mm-hmm. All that being said, the circumstances, uh, not my cup of tea. Arguably, very very flimsy on 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 plot there and rules but the scene itself between Renera and Alison I love 
their chemistry because it took me right back to season one. And arguably, it took me to young Allison and Renera, where there was just something about their mannerisms changed, the way they talk to one another. You're like, yes, clearly history, clearly friendship, yet also a lot of baggage. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And and it was just it, it was great. I love I love how it played out in the terms of like like going back through all of the wrongs and then also concluding with like Renera finally hearing from Allison what the words and more than one word, he didn't just say Aegon, what the words were that Viserys said on his deathbed and in his final moments. And now I would I would love to say that I walked away being like, yeah, Alice, you fucked up. But I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit on Allison's side here. Even if she yeah. realized it, like she realized in that moment she screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> she literally can't do anything. <laughs> Yeah. Like, what do you want her to do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like. I'm actually, I'm actually how, there with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like. So, Renera, you think it's as easy as Allison admitting she was wrong, and then like she can wave a wand, and Jaharis will suddenly be alive, and Aegon will step down. Like, like. At this point, it's too late. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm completely there with you. I was even though I'm still solidly team black, but absolutely. But in that moment, yeah, it was to to your point. I mean, it was like it was a bit naive of Renera. I don't know if they naive the white right word, but it was just it. it it all was not going to be well just because y'all had this moment of like realization, like, you know, where Allison, because Allison did was like, did realize that she misheard yep. what and, and mistake was mistaken about what happened that night, even though she's like, oh, there was no mistake. He's like, yes, there was a mistake. But, but at the same time, Renera didn't like, there was nothing there that she offered to like, make make this right or make this make this mistake right be you it, know it, it, it be wasn't pull, like pull back yeah yeah it wasn't like here here's what you did wrong and here's how we fix this yeah. and so i mean i'm just i'm gonna call spade a spade but yeah. technically this was renaris's idea <laughs> and so, idea? yeah yeah Renera, you better go back to Renera's and be like, why do you send me there? Like, we, we couldn't do anything. Like, like I, the women and their strategies and their political thinking, they're very smart. However, there was just this flaw here where it's like, yeah, even if you two talk and suddenly yeah. hug, like, you can't, you can't erase everything that's happened and neither of you have power to change it. Like, right. like what done, like it, it is, um, it is a bit heartbreaking yeah. when, when you have that as a viewer, which is interesting that, you know, it was great to see these two. And finally, like the truth is revealed and Allison sees what she did wrong in that, in that moment, but there's nothing to be done now. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it, it, you can't change it. And you certainly can't change anything that has transpired since then. Yeah, yeah, ex- exactly. And, and and to that point about the power, um, I mean, this scene wasn't, apparently the scene was not in the book. Uh, but, you know, it makes sense to, uh, to, as far as, again, what we've talked about with it being a very patriarchal society and, mm-hmm. and also people, um, you know, you know, not, you know, even if they, even if, you know, they go back to their respective people as far as their council and stuff. They're, they're you know, the, the, the die, like the, the die is cast and things are too far down and so much has happened. And, and as we talked about earlier, 
people at this point now aren't even clear about what what started this whole conflict. But you know, we we got to fight this. You know, we got to fight now. Um, well, so right. Think- they, it's not even like they don't even care why the Targaryens are fighting. They have a reason to fight for something that they've wanted to, and that's what played out in that cold open. Yep. Like. Yeah. They just use it as an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, so, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll do, but you're right. I mean, as far as the scene itself and, you know, I get Renisa's idea, you know, she, it, it, even whenever she and Renera were talking earlier, as far as like, you know, we auto, you know, all the players are, are gone now because auto Hightower is no longer out, you know. She played the role of Hightower in this episode. Last episode, High- Otto was the the cooler heads must prevail. Renice played that role this time, but it, it, both of them are powerless to do anything. Renice because she's a woman in this male world, and Otto because he's no longer king to you know he's no longer hand to the king. So yeah, they just it, it, I, I agree with you. It was very like heartbreaking or sobering when you realize like yeah you know. Maybe if this had happened before Jace and Eamon met there, you know, any number, I guess there's any number of flexion points where they, they could have like stopped things getting to this point, but now there's nothing can be done. Yeah. Well, that is it for House of Dragon. Let's move on to the boys. Episode five, Beware of the Jabberwock, my son, aka Animal Farm. <laughs> AKA Doom Patrol seasons. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, it took me a bit. It took me a bit. And then suddenly about halfway, about the time when, when Annie um, slaps Newman, I'm just mm-hmm. like, wait a second. <laughs> why, why am I getting a mix of Animal Farm and Doom Patrol? <laughs> <laughs> I got it when, uh, when, when a uh, butcher like, you know, Killed the chick, killed the bunny, <laughs> yep. crushed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was just this weird, weird whole sequence that I, I'll admit, towards the end, I kind of checked out of what was going on in Animal Farm, um, because this episode really is divided into arguably three parts. But mm-hmm. um, we'll we'll stick we'll stick to Animal Farm um, here to start with um, as. As it's basically the race to the virus, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the person behind the virus, or or kind of, um, he, he he's a scientist um, who also is uh, Newman's daughter's father, so so mm-hmm. they got a thing. Um, but I'm I'm just gonna go straight to the end because you said something to me last week that the end of this episode. I'm like, there's there's no way it's, it can not, not be. <laughs> so last week, Will, you said, I don't, what if Kessler isn't real? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I think it was painfully obvious in the last scene of this episode that Kessler is not real. Yeah. And, and I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> because, like... Like I, I'm mad on t- for two reasons. One reason is I don't know if it's as obvious had you not said that to me last week. Mm. Like if I had watched this episode without not with that thought not in my mind, would I have still seen it like clear as day? That being said, the fact that you have Simar who's tied up and being held hostage and Butcher coming in. And supposedly Kessler is behind him. And at one point, you even see, hear Butcher say, like, we need you. And, like, use the word we and mm-hmm. us and everything. And Seymour looks confused. He doesn't question it, which is annoying to me because I'm like, yeah. dude, come on, question. But also, they, they, they're not revealing it. So they're planting the seeds. So, so I, I feel like... Majority of me would say, if I if you didn't tell me that last week, I would have watched this episode and that ending scene. I would have come on tonight and been like, Kessler is not real. <laughs> 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 but but yeah, what what yeah. were your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah, with the whole Kessler thing, you know, because especially you know, not only the end, but also when they have their JFK moment in the park. Yep. Um, and um, and it was just the way it was like shot. I mean, it was like this gray like over filter on the on the scene. Um, just to like give that I don't know, but just to sort of give that ominous air to their their discussion and stuff just to sort of frame things as far as uh the plan and 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 with the virus and and everything else and it was speaking of the virus great tie-in to gen v uh, oh, we were wondering yeah we were wondering when we were going to get that uh, get the payoff with uh with with what we saw at the last scene there and and that and that um and that show but uh, um, yeah. I, have a, I have a question for you yeah, yeah. about Kessler. Yeah. Because we know that Butcher is having visions of his mm-hmm. late wife. Mm-hmm. So that just makes me wonder, who is Kessler to Butcher? So I, I do think he was someone that Butcher teamed up with back in the back in the day. Um, so I do think he was maybe... And maybe he's dead now. I don't know. Maybe he's like deep, deep, deep cover. Because I mean, Butcher, you know, Butcher was kicked out of the um, the whole CIA group that you know where I guess where Ryan was was I guess the uh, what was the lady's name? I can't remember her name now. But um, but I think they have some connections there with the company. So. Maybe that's where Kessler's coming in. So I mean, maybe he's maybe he's still alive somewhere out there. But I think. Oh, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, but but I think he's just the personification of like. No, I guess of I guess he's the black. He's the worm that keeps worms in around and, and that we see every time and 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 Butcher's body. Right. And and, and so. We've never so seen think, Butcher's dad, right? No. Oh yeah, we did. We did. we did. Remember he? Yeah, we saw yep. him and yeah. Right, and his brother died when they were young, right? Right, right, right. So it couldn't, it couldn't technically be either one of them, right? Yeah, right, right. Because I will, I'm just going to put this out there. Jeffrey Dean Morgan has played a dead father in a show called Supernatural, which was mm-hmm. also written by Eric Kripke. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Dean Morgan does have a type of a role. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, yeah, I, I hear you. I, I kind of wish it would be something a bit deeper, like than like an old coworker. But I just like that's my new question. I, mm-hmm. I'm already declaring himself a ghost in my mind. And now I just want to understand why. Why Kessler, out of everyone Butcher has encountered, especially because we are seeing him have visions of his late wife. So, yeah, it's interesting. Um, anything else about Animal Farm you want to talk? I mean, well, the biggie was Stan Edgar coming back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. good old Stan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I love it when it's like it's an absolute wonder you have. <laughs> You've made it this far. <laughs> you know, but he's not wrong. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's not, not wrong. <laughs> it really is. I mean, it really is. Like, Annie just on national television beat Firecracker to death. And and she's still wondering why America suddenly hates her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Annie and the Newman, the dynamic there with Newman teasing her as far as, like, not being able to use her powers and stuff. And. Uh, and he just, just angry, uh, cause I guess she just frustrated I guess, I mean, because it's basically, it's just all a mental block at, at this point. It's all in her head as far as why she can't like, you know, do the starlight thing. So. Well, she can, she just chooses not to, because she thinks like she, what she doesn't realize is starlight is not a, like a separate mm-hmm. entity. Starlight's a part of her, and so is Annie. It's it wasn't Anne, it wasn't Starlight who went and got an abortion. Right. It was Annie. Mm-hmm. And it and that information, Annie's information, medical interest, was shared with the entire nation. So like 
as Annie, she is upset, but so, so it's just, I think it's more about her real recognizing, like, it doesn't matter if I wear the cape or not. I'm still mm-hmm. a human who deals with this emotion called anger and mm-hmm. fear and resentment. And I can still be a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Vought, didn't, Vought didn't inject me with those kind of emotional steroids. No, they injected me with stuff that allows me to have powers. Mm-hmm. Um, and... And yeah, but yeah, yeah, she's just, she's very angry. And, and I, I think one of my issues, and I understand why they did that, but, or did this is that this, this season has been very minimal Annie and Huey. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the last few episodes, Huey has been off on his own little story (laughs) with his parents. Yeah. that came out of nowhere and which I I liked this episode I really did I didn't check out a whole lot on Huey and mom and dad storyline because I I did like the whole metaphor like you get the realize you get the explanation for why Huey's dad didn't let him be in charge of the mm-hmm. DNR yeah. um because he and and the moment he, they his father explains it as a viewer who has watched Huey for seasons, you're like, yes, you know your son. Yep, <laughs> that is who he is. That's who he is. Yep. <laughs> that is duly noted for real life circumstances, but we 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 don't want to be the dog in that scenario. So, and then to have that juxtapose with his dad getting the powers and then just everything going to shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I am, I'm always fascinated how on the boys, like it's been four seasons and yet they still come out with these powers that you've seen in other comic book shows and everything. And you're like, Oh, that would be cool. And then it's like, Nope. Because nope. I want, I saw that power on the boys, and that could go south very quickly. <laughs> yes. For walk, sure. You literally can walk through walls, and then in parentheses, and everything else. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say that. Um, yeah, this week's episode, as far as with Huey and and, and mom and dad, and of course, mom. You know, we. Uh, uh, I think it was very clear to mom really is there is not not a figment of Huey's imagination yeah. um I know that was out there too as far as theories but um I yeah I mean it, that 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 whole sequence this week really worked it, it really it was hard for me to watch for for just personal reasons I mean just you know losing my dad and, and that scene with with Huey and, and his you know that that last moment um you know it it uh you know it was it was a very emotional moment for me just you know just watching it and I have to, you know, give kudos to you know Jack Quaid and and Simon Pegg for just how how honest that was, mm-hmm. um, it, with, with their with that with that moment, but um, but yeah, but also just but the, the with he you know we were wondering last week like you know how how did how did he have he how did Huey Senior get the compound B in him anyway and mom mom like says oh yeah you know it fell out of your pocket which still seems kind of sus um oh, but, no. I, I i bought that <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh but like you said like everything else i agree with what you know what you said as far as it, it did have that you know with, with finding out why did the dnr to 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 the mom and and everything everything else about about that scene now closing out this part of the story, uh, at least with Huey, it, it it really, even though for as we were building up towards it, it was sort of like, okay, it was kind of like an afterthought in some res- respects through the show. But it, it, but now, now that we have a conclusion, it actually I was like, you know what, this 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 storyline actually did have some depth to it that uh, that we got honest payoff this week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm glad we stuck with it. Um, I'm curious about how Huey will um, 
function with the other members of the boys moving forward and if this will change something Mm -hmm. and his attitude especially towards butch considering butch half of his brain is a black tumor or whatever Mm -hmm. so 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 yeah um so we have those two storylines playing out and then we're jumping back and forth to v52 (laughs) (laughs) oh my god it was so great (laughs) yeah so good so so good, yeah. I mean, this episode I think was a, I think it's been the, was the longest episode of the season, and and part of it was the whole V fifty two Comic Con Marvel D twenty three send up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They had to announce phases seven through nineteen, and yep. a new vision, a new division, Vought Faith. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I just. Yeah, it was. It's so, like this is why the soup storylines are so much more funny that yep. are so much more like you gravitate them to them more than what's going on with the boy. <laughs> because they Black at it, the performative like diversity. I'm like, ah, oh, this <laughs> the oh, writing yeah. there oh. and the branding. Yeah, I mean, that was like, yeah. I know we talked about it last week with like the uh, you know the, the whole like uh, yeah you're one of the good ones and then this one with the performative diversity and all that kind of stuff I'm mm-hmm. like God these guys are so on point. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Th- there was a line, um, I just I just can't I can't find it. But m- yeah, I had I had the same thought. I'm just like oh this is the uh, like. The the writers inserting microaggressions. Is yes. So <laughs> yes. <bad. laughs> I cracked out loud. I laughed out loud when I heard that. Yeah. 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 And then and then also, I thought it was interesting that um, that we we have Firecracker who mm-hmm. previous week, her her and Sage were getting along and and now. Even though Firecracker is perfectly fine, yeah, she, a little embarrassment, but she's still on top. So what matter? Now she apparently has it out for Sister Sage. Um, yeah. So or or it just is like not as friendly. I don't I don't mm-hmm. know if there's anything. I I'm, I guess the more it goes on, the more I'm like, okay, what's what's the real end plan game plan for Firecracker here? Because I don't necessarily know if there's any redemption, but they're they're clearly using her for yeah. something, and it's not just about Annie. So, no. um, so yeah, they, there there's a reason also why she's on the seven. Although, arguably in this day and age, you, you really don't know why anybody is on um, the seven, including A Train, who amongst in the background of all of this is continues to be sussed out by sage. Yeah. Yeah. She knows. <laughs> she, she, there's no way she does not know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, a train. You're a good guy at this point, yeah. but not that bright. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> she knows she just doesn't know how to use it to her advantage. And, and a train does do and makes an interesting move by, proposing an alliance with Ashley. Mm-hmm. And just when you forget about all of that, it turns out that in the end, Ashley comes through and uh, manages to offer up our lovely friend from also Gen V. That was a Tech Knight. That was uh, the other guy, Cameron. Um, Tech Knight did show up in, the sh- in this episode, though. Um, okay, they look they look the same to me. They are. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't Tech Knight. It was the other guy, the uh, the newsreader, uh, Cameron. He was the, he was the one he, he you know Ash because he broke so what because Ashley what what pissed her off was, you know he was her dog he was her yeah, uh, yeah. submissive yeah and he, he yeah, broke up I, with if her. I got them confused then then yeah. yeah the the other guy I I was hoping it was more Tech Knight but they yeah. they look exactly yeah. the same to me and at one point one of the te- movies was being. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. But, but te- yeah. But but is he, yeah. But Tech Knight also has so yeah he he has some weird fetish thing going too in Gen V. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. But but um, 
Yeah, but because they, yeah, they they do have the scene scene there at the end, and I was I was listening to someone talk about whether or not um, that they did the did the, 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 the soups kill Cameron or I think it's his name. I can't remember. He's I just remember he's like the Sean Hannity or you know Jesse Waters type Fox News reader. Um, if they killed them or not, because usually whenever there's a kill, they like show it. As far as like the like like whenever they beat the kid the 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 um the three homelanders with the baseball bats right but they yeah but I mean but I just wonder if they're just like trotting him back out after correcting him so that he you know that um or, or if he if he's dead I mean it's, he's an inco- at the end of the day it's uh, you know it's not a big pot point it was just something it was just interesting how they just kind of cut to the end they didn't didn't show the remnants of him if the soups did beat him up or kill him right right and then at the same time you have the deep who um is in a sparring match with cameron because cameron um announces basically that he lost overseeing um crime analytics yep <laughs> <laughs> the deep yep. is just a good good wild card for them to have in their back like they they've managed over the course of the four seasons to just make make some very creative choices with how how are you going to use the deep in this episode how will mm-hmm. he like like will he be like he at the, yeah, yeah yeah i, I just i just love him um yeah. Uh, yeah, Gary. they're back and forth on the stage as far like you know as far as not only the 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 crime analytics but also exposed in the deep and his octopus relationship and then you know big deep's like I'm gonna fuck your wife and all the the back and forth with that that was just you're right I mean he's he's such a utility player as far as how they could fit him in to like make a story work <laughs> right right for whatever purpose they need it for. And and Homelander is back from his trip from home and seems to have a new perspective on at least fatherhood. Mm-hmm. And we see some good Homelander and Ryan bonding, which is amazing um, because he sees that Ryan doesn't want to do, what is it, super school? Right, yeah. <laughs> super school? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> At power school or something. Something um, like that, yeah. 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 And he clearly also doesn't want to do it because he hates the the director who we've seen throughout the years, mm-hmm. um, director Adam. And uh and then he also witnesses uh how how much of a sleaze bag this guy is as his PA is clearly being tormented and sexually harassed by him. Yep. Um and so but just inevitably like the best intentions homelander still just manages to like just push it <laughs> to the extreme yep just a bit far <laughs> just a bit far and 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 ryan basically has the pa kick the shit out of the director and yep. and um hashtag me too <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of wish they would have said something like that. That was <laughs> like the only thing. That, yeah. Away. yeah, that was the only thing that was missing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that I think about it, but yeah. I mean, I'm glad that they didn't. It was clear that his trip down memory lane had an effect on him, mm-hmm. and it makes sense why he approached Ryan or how he treated Ryan in these moments in this episode. So I'm glad like it, it didn't take us another episode to get here. They, they came while it was still fresh. It makes sense what Homelander was doing. Now, will it last? God, no. And, and will Homelander like his own narcissistic, Tendencies come back absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. For, I had to say, I, I, I was a little with, with the Ryan t- turn of like, you know, using, uh, you know, ordering her to slap him and beat the guy, beat up the director. 
you know, it it kind of caught me off guard in the sense that, you know, Ryan was so, you know, he, he, he was very concerned about, like, using his his abilities to harm people, you know, doing too much to harm people and stuff. It, I don't know. It just seemed it just seemed like such a 180 from like with with Ryan for whatever reason. It just didn't right. land right. Yeah, it just didn't land right with me as far as like him so quickly going to you know doing Homelander's bidding this particular way. Well, well, okay. That's that's um. Let let me think about that because. I didn't take it that way. I th- I think it wasn't even Homelander's bidding. Like Maybe manipulation. He, he yeah. doesn't he doesn't care. Yeah. I took it more as Ryan who says he wants to help people. And then and then Homelander kind of pointing out, well, do you want to start now? Do you want to help her cuz you're clearly uncomfortable with what you're observing here. Mm-hmm. Um and and then yeah, he doesn't want to use his powers, but in that moment, technically, he's not using his powers. Yeah. He's using a different kind of power, a power that arguably is even more powerful. Like, he's using the threat of, like, yeah. if you don't do what I say. Now, he's so young, he doesn't recognize that. Homelander does. Yeah, he yeah. knows exactly because, like Homelander, this is how he's raised. But, but Ryan is just like, I don't want to do this. I want, I want to help you find the strength and give you the ability to beat the shit out of someone who's been sexually harassing you. Yeah. Now, so, so I didn't take it as, I don't think it was Ryan viewing like. Oh, I accidentally threw this guy too hard and he's dead now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm helping. I'm telling someone, "Hey, you you can it'll be perfectly fine if you just slap this guy and maybe punch him and you know, maybe give him a concussion. Just yeah. go for it." Go for it. Yeah. True, yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, that, that that makes sense. That makes sense. And also, I guess the other thing I did like what I did like about it though, and again, yes, Homelander has lost. He has gained the perspective on being a father, but but also he is, you know, in typical Homelander fashion, he's figured out how to manipulate Ryan, like those scientists manipulated him. Um, or, but he just figured out how to manipulate Ryan because and and and, and to, to to win, you know, try to win his affections and stuff. Right. Or in yeah. this situation, what yeah. what. The game that Homelander is playing with Ryan isn't the long game, though. Mm-hmm. And and that's I, I and that's something that I I don't know. I I feel like yeah. I feel like Homelander's in it for instant gratification, but doesn't realize like yeah, you were able to like coerce a situation where you you in your son's eye was a great fatherly advice. But I don't know. Come next week, is that still going to happen? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you're not always going to have a sleaze ball director walking around clearly right. sle- sexualizing someone. <laughs> like yeah. so. So I think the circumstances offered a good opportunity, but I don't. I don't think that that Homelander quite realizes how long he has to serve in that role. And Mm -hmm. the longer he does, the more he'll, he'll, the restless he'll become because he's a narcissist. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, sometimes your kids just, they, they fall out of love with you and then they fall back in. It's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yep. Yep, for sure. All right. Well, that that is it for us tonight. Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes. Uh, before before I do that, just wanted to give a quick thank you to our artist uh, Lindsay Lee. She uh, probably start seeing some of our banner and some other our logos and some other things get updated. So I just wanted to say 
thank you and and keep and appreciate all the great work that she does for us uh you can find her on fan tunes and some of her work there also but uh you can find me on x formerly known as twitter at will m polk w-i-l-l-m-p-o-l-k and you can find me there too at sj belmont s-j-b-e-l-m-o-n-t please follow our crew on twitter at scene and nerd find us on facebook follow us on instagram and threads at scene underscore n underscore nerd and visit our website www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com but most importantly rate follow and comment on apple Podcasts, spotify youtube or wherever you get your podcast good night geek out you're welcome <laughs>